is uh, unlocking transparency and open data management and metadata standards with Drupal and DKIM. <laughs> we have a dying figure here, so I may need to show the slide a lot. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll just uh, point. I think she might have been standing between. So. Oh, okay. Um, so hi, I am Dan Fader. I'm a senior developer at Civic Actions. Um, I'm also one of the co-maintainers of DCAN. I've been at Civic Actions for about seven years, and I've been working on DCAN for about ten years. Um, Civic Actions, we're a digital services company that helps deliver, helps the government deliver better public services through open technology and design. We're also celebrating our 20, 20 years anniversary today, or this summer. Um, and we're one of the many um, great sponsors at this conference, so um, please visit all of us and send us good vibes. Um, this is how we make this conference free every year. So uh, today I'm going to be giving a high-level look at where we're at and where we're going with DCAMP, which is um, a project, a Drupal module for building open data catalogs in Drupal. Um, we're going to go over some basic functionality, talk about how we develop DCAN, and uh, give sort of a peek into our current roadmap. Um, <laughs> so just kind of out of curiosity, uh, who here works with open data, government data, public data somehow? Great. Um, hoping for some great questions at the end. Uh, basically, uh, for people who aren't familiar, um, we talk about open data, we're talking about data that um, anyone can access, use, and share. Uh, it's sort of part of a tendency over the last few decades towards open government in general. Um, and comes from this idea that any data produced by the government should belong to the people. Um, it's a sort of a transparency and accountability mechanism. You can think of it as sort of a, um, you know, a sister policy to things like FOIA. Um, but it's kind of more than that also. Um, it can foster innovation and, um, and improve government functioning internally because it sort of increases the wheels of government of data sharing between the agencies. Um, the sort of best practices in open data revolve around open formats, so we want to see people sharing data in formats you don't need proprietary software to work with, um, for it to be interoperable. We want it to be very findable, so we want um, people to not just be able to find the, the data set that they know a file name, but to have it sort of be part of the web of searchable data and metadata. We'll talk more about that in a second. Um, and then it should be up to date, but it should also persist. If you have a link one year, it shouldn't be done next year. And the licensing should um, allow for all kinds of use and reuse. So. Um, <laughs> All right, um, so in the United States, open data practices sort of flow from guidelines that were part of something called Project Open Data. Um, you can go to the website, it's now called resources.data.gov, and it has a lot of schemas and guidelines for how the government um, wants agencies to be um, <clears throat> sharing and cataloging their data sets. Um, the sort of most visible output of this is the data.gov catalog, which aggregates uh, open data sets from all across the government into one place. Uh, basically, if you're doing open data correctly, your data sets are going to get um, aggregated or harvested into this big central catalog. Um, this is also an example of what DCAN uh, is doing. It's a data catalog. This is actually running on the CCAN, which is the inspiration for DCAN. Um, CCAN is a Python-based application. Uh, with DCAN, we were trying to implement something similar uh, on top of Drupal. So um, this brings us to DCAN itself. It's an open source data management platform. Um, like I said, inspired by DCAN, the major thing it's trying to do is list all the data sets available in an organization, describe those with detailed metadata. So metadata is structured data about data. Um, and the uh, additional thing that, um, that DCAN does is 
is it presents a queryable API for that data if it's imported in the right way. Um, so we think that Drupal is a great choice for sharing open data. Um, these are actually some talking points that we've heard from our customers. Um, you know, there are a lot of very good ways to, to stand up an open data catalog, to share data. Um, Drupal, Drupal and DK not the only ones, um, but Drupal, we all know, I think, if we're here, like the, the, the good things about Drupal, um, it's in many ways scalable on the right infrastructure, flexible, um, it has a lot of user and permissions management built in, it has all kinds of uh, single sign-on modules uh, to integrate with your agency, um, there's just lots of best practices in, in government for performance op optimization, for accessibility, um, all those kinds of things. And there's just a big sort of talent pool out there, people that, that can work on a Drupal site that, um, that might not be on the platform. Um, <clears throat> that said, you could, and people have, stand up a data catalog just with Drupal. Um, just add the fields you want. You know, it's uh, just linking to CSV files or PDF files or whatever is not uh, rocket science, as they say, but there are some pretty, I think, special things about DKN that make it really powerful for these kinds of websites. Um, we'll go through them right now. Um, the biggest one, I'm sorry, I probably went faster than Paul's going to keep up. Uh, yeah, you need to tell me. <laughs> keep forgetting enough. I'm not So, the slide? Yes. Um, so, despite being a, D, a Drupal application, DCAN is really built around JSON. Um, it does store metadata as content, but JSON plays the biggest role. Um, and that's because JSON is sort of the foundation of modern metadata standards. Um, XML or RDF also still play a role, but JSON is just the most accessible and popular in like 2024. Um, so rather than mapping back and forth between platform-specific database schemas, which is what um, the first version of DCAN and Drupal 7 did, and what most uh, data catalog software do one way or another, we are sort of cutting out the middleman and working directly with JSON. So we're storing data as JSON and we're validating it with something called JSON schema. So JSON schema, I don't know if people, probably some people are, are familiar with it, is Part of a lot of software we use. Uh, there'd be no composer without JSON schema. It's a it's a specific type of JSON file that tells you how other JSON files have to look. So it tells you what fields are allowed and aren't. Validation criteria for those fields. It is kind of a lot like the Drupal field API in terms of what you can do with it, um, but it's a little bit more powerful in terms of validation specifically. You can say, well, this field has this regex pattern that uh, input has to follow some built-in formats, things like that. Um, so, so this is an example of schema. I don't know, we don't have to go through it point by point, but hopefully you can see there's some required fields, you can see the beginning of a list of fields and, and descriptions of them. And then the data itself is going to conform to that schema. So you may recognize some of the fields in this JSON from the schema before it. Um, so, in DCAN, we can create a data set, and it's going to have all the fields that were defined in that JSON schema we saw before that are part of the sort of basic um, data set description that we get from these open data standards. Uh, you, can, you can see it has a lot of fields out of the box with the forms that it goes on, and on, and on, and uh, some of these are sort of nested, you can add more instances of these field sets. But if we go to the content type um, configuration, there's only two fields. Um, you can see JSON metadata and data type. So how could this be? Where did that form come from? Um, a big thing that's within uh, the DCAN module is a sub-module that we may break off and release on its own because it's mostly self-contained. Um, it's called, name's not up there, but it's called JSON form widget. And it's a, it's a module that works with the, with the Drupal form API to build complete forms from these JSON schemas. So <clears throat> for this content type, my data type field is going to kind of get the, the, the value data set. And DCAN will find 
Um, is that the right one? <laughs> Uh, DKIM will find this data set file and build a form from it. And on top of that, we have a second file, which is sort of a special second schema called the UI schema. And that has additional, um, specifically form presentation options that we keep sort of decoupled from the schema itself. Uh, that actually, our inspiration from that is a really cool React uh, library. For, Component, I'm not a React person, I forget the terms, but a React package called uh, React JSON Schema Form, uh, which does the same thing in React. It lets you build really complicated forms from JSON schemas uh, combining them with these UI schemas. Um, so if you're building a front end app that works with metadata or any kind of JSON schema, definitely recommend you check that library out. So. Um, so yeah, uh, to sum it up, by combining JSON schema and our UI schema, we can have the metadata, uh, we, can, we can define the metadata in the code base, have it in version control. Um, it gives us more power, powerful validation, and it means that the underlying sort of DCAN module doesn't have to accommodate lots of different field config configurations. You'll always have the same two fields on your data sets. Um, so definitely, there will be time for questions at the end if uh, people want to know more about that. Uh, I'd say the other really big um, feature that people will come to DCAM for is our CSV import. Um, it basically takes you from a CSV file, could be a local file or a URL to a file on the web, and ingests it, imports it into a database table, which is then queryable through an API. Um, so this is sort of an example on this slide of metadata. You can see there's a download URL field, which has, um, this is from Open Payments, which is uh, one, of our, one of the sites that we work on. It's a catalog specifically uh, from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services of open data about uh, pharmaceutical company payments to physicians. Um, so this particular record has to a data set, to a CSV file, which is actually on a different domain than the site itself. Uh, this is this, the data catalog website. Uh, it has download link. This is a React app, so that it's reading that API that we saw before and building this page, including a download link from the URL. But also, Also, there's another tab on this page that gives us a preview into the data. So we actually see a table. Um, it's a little hard to see on this little screenshot, but this is a very big table. Uh, you can see it's 1 to 50 of 14 million rows. Uh, that would be impossible to build from parsing a CSV file. So it's just too much data to parse in memory. Um, you can also you can see it also has uh, a sort of basic query builder. So you can drill down into that data a little bit more. You can say, OK, wow, that's 14 million rows. I don't really have time to download the CSV and use my own data analysis software. I just want to see. I just want to filter it by teaching hospital name in, this, in case of this data set. So there are tools um, in this front, in this particular front end app. Um, there's tools to do that, and they use this API that comes out of the box from DCAN. Um, but, so just behind the scenes, you know, there's a JSON API that's going to give us those values, uh, you know, those rows from the CSV as JSON, uh, that's possible because we imported the CSV into the database and have an API that's reading from the database. Um, so with that, you know, in addition to that preview, we can build really complicated and powerful visualizations, search interfaces, uh, things like that, all powered by the API that we got just by importing that CSV file. So, um, yeah, just to sum up, with the importer, a new CSV URL that's added to the catalog is going to be queued for a copy and import. Um, these imports can be handled directly with MySQL load data, so um, that's something that 
MySQL has built in. You know, most most um, Drupal sites are going to be running on MySQL, and it can take a CSV file and turn it into a table incredibly fast, much faster than anything that based on PHP parsing could do. So by kind of having our own code that plugs into that function directly, um, we're able to import really, really large CSV files. I think, um, as an example, Open Payments has an 8 gigabyte CSV that imports in 20 minutes. Um, that would probably take hours if we were parsing it row by row in PHP. Um, and these things all queue, use Drupal's queuing, so they can be going on in the background. Uh, you're not waiting for a 20 minute batch job in the, in the UI or anything like that. Um, so, um, if anyone has questions, wants to see sort of the uh, guts of that, we can we can do a live demo after the talk. Um, the but, uh, yeah, demo slide. Um, general, just want to emphasize that uh, DCAN is built collaboratively and open. I mean, it, uh, it's maintained and developed by Civic Actions, but we take uh, issues and pull requests from the community. Uh, it, it does live in GitHub. You know, it was sort of born in this open data ecosystem 10 years ago that was a real early adopter of GitHub, and that sort of felt like the space that we wanted to be in. Um, so, for better or for worse, it's not your blood work, um, but GitHub has a lot of features you're probably all familiar with that make it easy to plug in. We've got a discussion forum open. Um, there's a sort of growing community there that's, that's working on this together. Um, so, this DCAN's been out for a while. Uh, for people that have been familiar with it, sorry, for a long time, I just wanted to talk about the sort of latest thing that we've released. Uh, this may seem funny, but a non-decoupled front-end is sort of a new feature. Uh, we really built DCAN as an API first. Um, its first sites in production were really mostly React decoupled sites, and we needed an API. Um, so we're, we're really trying to reach parity with the things that you can get on regular Twig templates uh, that are themable in, in Drupal, because um, that was sort of a missing thing from some people's experience for a while. Um, on the flip side, I think it's notable that DCAN has developed API first, um, and that there's, you know, the features are all, are all very readable and writable uh, through, through really powerful APIs. Um, the other, let's see. Next slide. The other more recent feature, which is uh, is released, but still a bit of work in progress, are data dictionaries. People that work with data are probably familiar with this concept, but the metadata we've been talking about so far is, for, is mostly for describing tables um, or other kinds of data sets at the set level. Um, a lot of times it's important to describe data at the column level. If you're putting out a big CSV file um, has a lot of columns. It's not always obvious to the consumer what's going on in each column from the column header. So a data dictionary lets you say, this column, here's a bit more about it. Uh, here's maybe the data type that it has. It's actually an integer. Maybe it has a range. Maybe it represents a certain unit, like feet or meters or pounds. Um, data dictionaries let people publish that information. Um, we also have some functions that let you use it to type the columns in the database so that um, you know they're actually numeric or whatever or date columns in that database table that the CSV is imported into. Um, and in the future, we see this as a way that people could actually validate the data. Um, so that's sort of something that that some people want to do is to be able to say, you know, not only is this metadata sort of up to spec and has all the fields that are required. The data itself is valid according to the metadata. Um, slide. So on open payments, we've got kind of the bleeding edge of this stuff. There's another tab on each data set page called Data Dictionary where you can see sort of a, a rendering of the, the column information behind the scenes, of course. Slide. It's, it's still JSON. Um, we're using a, an existing Standard called Table Schema from um, the Data Package set of standards. Um, so it just gives, just gives you a lot of tools for describing data at the column level. Uh, so. 
So just to, our work roadmap is also, you know, always a bit of a work in progress, but uh, things that we have coming up next uh, is generally to sort of make it more familiar for, for Drupal developers. Um, we want to get releases on Drupal.org, um, sort of use more Drupal conventions and APIs that we may have worked around or avoided earlier um, that have caused some confusion among adopters. Um, the schema system that I talked about first um, is the foundation, but it could be easier to sort of override or extend schemas or to distribute them as modules. So we're working on a, a sort of better better way to, to manage those schemas. Um, we've done a lot of really great front-end work for specific projects, and we want to find a, a way to make those more general purpose and share them in a component library or maybe a starter front-end app. Um, so we're working on that actively. Like, out of the box, you don't get all of the features you can see on the site with open payments, um, even though the API would support all of it. Um, one thing, as a sort of metadata nerd, if that's a thing I'm excited about, is uh, the newest version of DCAP, which is the name of that federal uh, metadata standard, is much more broad and um, contains a lot of... It, the, the original Project Open Data schema that we showed is a kind of rigid JSON schema that, that works for validation, but doesn't give you a lot of options for more Kind of more complicated descriptions of data. Uh, the newer DCAT standard has more of a graph model, so there's lots of different concepts that can be linked with different fields. Um, that's it's kind of philosophical, but I think it's it's giving data publishers a lot of tools to do um, to do more interesting things to really kind of live up to that linked data stand, uh, ideal that some of us uh, got excited about many years ago that hasn't really been realized uh, up till today. Um, some other things on our roadmap, uh, because it's all in Drupal, you can use uh, you know, workflow states and, and Workbench to have a approval workflow for a data sets getting to publication, but there are some quirks and we want to make that process a bit smoother. And also that data store, the CSV importer, um, we see a lot of potential in sort of making that plug, a, a more of a plug-in based system so that you could use other backends, not just the Drupal database. I uh, can imagine, okay, I have a CSV file, but I want to import it into a solar index or some other database backend. Um, so that's something we're, we're kind of in the initial stages of thinking about. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I've got some links. If, uh, I think there's going to be a way to get to download the presentations. Um, so some links to some of the things that I've been talking about. Um, I'm easy to find on LinkedIn. Oh, next slide. Uh, you can, the easiest way is really just to go to the repo and um, and start asking questions or reach out. And of course, uh, civic actions, we've got a booth out in the hall. I'll, be trying, I'll try to be there as much as possible in the afternoon. And just uh, one more thanks to our sponsors. And uh, yeah, people may have noticed there was another speaker slated who couldn't make it. Um, Liz, our director of product, couldn't be here. She's more of a public speaker than I am, but thanks for bearing with me. And uh, yeah, any comments or questions would be great. Sorry? Right, we do have a page on Drupal.org, but there's no, you'll see there's no releases there. So it just kind of directs you to, to GitHub. Um, I think at minimum we want to be pushing releases to Drupal.org so that it's easier to see what the latest release is, uh, get us sort of in line with Drupal security policies, all that kind of thing. Like we're, we're already doing security the way that we would uh, as a, you know, as a module on Drupal.org, but, but it's, not, it's not really in, in line with the security process, things like that. Um, our company, I think, supports, supports several sites at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services right now. Um, they've been sort of the major driver of the latest version of DCAN. We also have a new collaboration with Oak Ridge National Laboratory, um, and 
so that's a, that's a newer data portal for a more research data focus. Um, and that's also, I didn't get into this, but the, the newer DCAT standard brings these things more in line with sort of research data standards, so people are familiar with things like DOIs or citations, um, it, it gives you more integration with sort of that, that world. Um, but yeah, those are the two main projects that we're working on, and then um, there's several, you know, adopters that have stood up their own DCAN sites in the wild, I don't have a, a total off the top of my head. Should have some more information about that, um, but yeah, there's. I can I can show you a, <laughs> can show you in person if you if we can find time, but um, it's still a little bit rough. It doesn't look like the, the couple front end, but um, but the pages are there and there's there's templates and views that could be overwritten and extended. Christian. So do you can you install it with Composer? Or how do you install it? Right, it's on packages instead of like Drupal. So, just compose a require, get dcan slash dcan. We'd like it to be Drupal slash dcan, so basically. Is there like a list of websites using dcan? Um, there probably should be, but there is not. <laughs> um, we're, we, I think we have a new uh, sort of, you know, brochure site that, that just launched in the last few days. Uh, it might be a future, future content for that site. Oh yeah, here's, here's our, uh, <laughs> the uh, creator of that site right here. What's the URL? GitDCAN.org. We have a demo up there, but we don't have all the demo. Yeah. Yeah, I should have put that in our uh, list of links, but I forgot. But it exists, it's so new. <laughs> Can you repeat that? Oh, Getdecan.org, <laughs> and uh, we've got you know one pages of the uh, specific actions booth with uh, some more information. Um, yeah, I mean I'd be curious people that raise their hand about working with data. Um, you know, if if you're using Decan in some way, or if you're using uh, other software, and curious about how it would work with your pipelines and things. You know, I like Python is a. It's been around for a long time. It has sort of a, a whole ecosystem around it. So I can't say we can do everything that Ccan does, but I think there there are some things that we do differently and possibly better depending on your point of view. And um, you know, the goal is to provide like the basic functionality in a Drupal module. Um, I think I think with you know. Sort of mixing and matching with Drupal modules, you could get a lot of, you know, a lot of things. But uh, but yeah, I mean, CCAN is probably the, the standard thing to compare it against. The, the sort of most well-known commercial proprietary thing would be Socrata, uh, which people have probably encountered even if they don't know it on, on government sites. Um, and uh, I would say definitely go with something open source over proprietary. Uh, we feel really strongly that. Open data is really open if it's not on open source uh, platforms. Yep. So I missed the very um, beginning of your presentation. Um, 
I work with mostly kind of, I guess we would have to have the humanities data. Mm -hmm. Are there people, and this would be like for small data sets in comparison, we're talking you know, thousands of artists and millions. Um, are there people who are using this kind of platform to let those kind of records, and like for instance, the records that might be kind of library records or archival records, how, how are they using that? Um, right, so I think I would say more generally, there are people that have used DCAN for research data. Um, I don't know how, I'm more familiar, like we've done more work with just scientific types of data, but it's still kind of a library, more in the library science side of things. So the biggest thing seems to be uh, connecting to the whole DOI ecosystem, um, you know, being able to pull in information from DOI registries, track citations, things like that. Um, so that is something, uh, this project I talked about with Oak Ridge, um, we're doing a lot of that. Uh, so far it's kind of custom extensions, but we're looking at ways to bring that inside if you can. Um, I think, yeah, humanities data specifically I can't think of, but I don't, I don't see why not. Um, it's definitely, that's, that's one of the reasons that we went with this really flexible JSON-based schema system because, you know, we don't really know what people, what kind of metadata standards people might be using, um, and it's, it's, it's very amenable to things that we might not have thought of. I don't know what kind of, if, um, yeah, in terms of archival, that's like a bit outside of my experience. I know there's specific things about data archiving that's different than data cataloging. Um, no, not data archiving, but data that is archival data. Um, or like library, like library data might be stored in online, it's like a digital version of the catalog. Mm -hmm. catalog. Uh, yeah, um, I would think there's plenty of ways to integrate, but I don't have direct experience with that. Yeah. Does it come with any Schemas or like starter schemas? Out of the box, it comes with the, the, the federal DCAT US with the technical name for it, open data schema. Um, yeah. What is DOI? So DOI is like the digital object identifiers. Um, that's something more from the sort of academic realm, uh, but that is a, there's sort of an international network of authorities that create unique global identifiers for things, usually books or art articles or data sets. Also, I think you can get a DOI for like an object in a museum, things like that. So um, if, you, if you mint a DOI for your data set, you can sort of federate that up to this system and it's mostly for citation. So if somebody writes an article, they've got a code that they can use to cite your data and then you can sort of sense that it's been cited. Um, so that can be sort of a bridge to saying, well, here's my data set, here's all the articles that cited it. Um, or there's tools where you can just plug in a DOI and it give you like a properly formatted citation. Um, in the government, a lot of that goes to the Department of Energy has a DOI minting service called OSTI, and a lot of other federal agencies use that to mint DOIs for their data sets. Like I said, I will be at the booth uh, for most of the rest of the day. Be excited to get in the weeds with people on some of this stuff. Um, and yeah, that was much quicker than I than it went in my uh, practice. So enjoy your uh, free time.